Hello, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing my most anticipated books of 2023 and I can tell you now it's kind of a lot. I want to say that I have about 30-ish thriller and horror type of books on this list and then I also do have about 17 books that either fall into romance or sci-fi or some other genre. But there are so many titles coming out in the year of 2023 that I'm so excited about that I'm sure that I'm even forgetting some because there are just so many that I'm looking forward to. However, before we do jump into the video, I wanted to take a second to thank today's sponsor, which is Every Plate. It's a brand new year and Every Plate is here to help you with all of your New Year's resolutions, whether that's saving money on groceries eating healthier, they've got you covered. I know saving money is on everyone's mind at the beginning of the year and it's fantastic because Every Plate is America's most valued meal kit company. Every Plate is 25% cheaper than grocery shopping and it's really great because they send you all of the ingredients that you need to make for every meal so that you don't have anything left over, you don't have any waste after you finish making the food, which I also think is really great. I also think that Every Plate is just so much fun to learn new recipes and especially if you're someone like me who doesn't really consider themselves a cook and I don't really know a lot of recipes off the top of my head. I feel like every plate just makes cooking so much fun. I think it's also great because most of their meals are ready in about 30 minutes or less so you don't have to sit there for hours trying to make a quality meal and you don't have to miss out on a quality meal if you're short on time because just about 30 minutes you can make almost any of their meals and they're so good. First I was quite a bit skeptical because of how affordable their prices are and I was like there's no way the food will be that that good but it is that good and I think it's incredible that you can get such great meals at such a low price. This afternoon I made this linguine carbonara which was so freaking fantastic. I'm a huge carbonara fan and so I was really excited to try this and with just six simple ingredients this was so freaking delicious like this had no right being as good as it was. So you can get started with every plate for just $1.39 per meal when you go to everyplate.com and use my code GABBYREADS139. Can you believe? Let me repeat it one more time because that is so affordable. You can get started for just $1.39 per meal. That's a dollar and 39 cents when you go to everyplate.com and you use my code GABBYREADS139. What a steal. That's up to $134 in value. Like that is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much to Every Plate for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back to the books. All right. So now to jump into the actual books, I figured I would share my screen. That way you can see these books on Goodreads so you can actually look at the, you know, description and the premise yourself. Some of these I have added to my, you know, anticipated list just because of the premise, but some of these I have added because of the author or because I've just heard it around and it sounded really cool. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, the very first book on this list is going to be Antimatter Blues, which is actually Mickey 7. It's the sequel to Mickey 7, which is a sci-fi book that I read last year that I really freaking enjoyed. Also, just a heads up, I'm going to be going in order kind of of genre. I'm going to start with like the sci-fis and then go to the romances and then I'll save the thriller and horror books for the very end. But yeah, uh, this one is one that I'm just very intrigued by. Um, I haven't heard too many people talking about Mickey 7, if I'm being honest. Like it came out early last year and there was a lot of buzz right when it came out, but then I didn't really hear anybody still talking about it. But Mickey 7 was such a fun you know, sci-fi story that follows this guy who's an astronaut. And I'm obsessed with this new cover uh, for the sequel. I just think it looks so stunning. This one comes out in March. I'm really looking forward to it. And next up, this is another like sci-fi horror book that I have on the list. It's called Ascension. This one just says a mind-bending speculative thriller in which the sudden appearance of a mountain in the middle of the Pacific Ocean leads to a group of scientists to a series of jaw-dropping revelations that challenge the notion of what it means to be human. Like, I don't even know really what this is about, but it looks really fucking cool. And then the only other sci-fi that I had on this list is this young adult LGBT sci-fi that comes out very soon in January. Um, this one's premise is what intrigues me. It says the Breakfast Club meets the OA in this thrilling science fiction about teens from the past and the future who travel across the astral plane save to save the ones they love. Um, I don't know. It sounds like it's going to be really beautiful. It takes place partially in 1986 and then partially in 2044. So like I love the idea of like doing some time traveling and stuff like that. But I don't know. This one's getting really low reviews so far it looks like. So that has me a little bit nervous. But regardless, I'm still pretty excited to read this one. I think it sounds really interesting. 
And then another young adult book that I had on my list is this one, Ander and Santi Were Here. This one comes out April 4th. And oh my gosh, okay, look at this premise right here. This is the reason. Aristotle and Dante meets The Hate You Give meets The Sun Is Also a Star. Those are all young adult books that I gave five stars to. So that has me so excited. Um, it says it's a stunning young adult contemporary love story about a Mexican-American teen who falls in love with an undocumented Mexican boy. Oh my gosh, I'm freaking hyped. I think this cover is so stunning. Um, and yeah, this one comes out in April. I'll definitely be checking that one out. And then another young adult book that I had on this list is The Fraud Squad. Um, this one just looks so freaking cute. I'm kind of obsessed with this cover, to be honest. This one also comes out in January. This one says, a working class woman who infiltrates Singapore's high society to fulfill her dreams risks, risks losing everything in the process, including herself. And yeah, I mean, I don't know if this will be my thing or not. I don't think I've ever read anything by this author before, but I was just really intrigued by this cover and I just thought the premise sounded cool. So I might be checking this one out. And then the last young adult book that I have on this list is That Summer Feeling by Bridget Morrissey. This one is a uh, lesbian, LGBT, contemporary, queer young adult book. It comes out in May this year. And this one just, oh my gosh, okay, first of all, this cover is so freaking cute. And then I love that it's like summer camp romance. Um, it sounds amazing. I feel like this would just be the perfect, you know, like young adult summer camp, summer romance book, you know, so I will be checking this one out this summer. Oh my gosh. Okay. The first romance I have on this list is the one that I'm probably, well, maybe one of my most anticipated on this list because it's The Neighbor Favor by Christina Forrest. I've never read anything by this author before. Um, I'm not sure if it's a debut, but it says a shy bookworm enlists her charming neighbor to help her score a date, not knowing he's the obscure author she's been corresponding with. So, oh my gosh, it just sounds like a lot of tropes that I love because I, I love the idea of a protagonist who's like a shy bookworm, but then freaking he's an author and her author's like the neighbor. Um, I don't really know. I'm just excited for this. I'm obsessed with this cover. Like this might be one of my favorite romance covers that I've ever seen. It's just so freaking cute. I love like the building is like purple and the sky's freaking yellow and just uh, the freaking city vibes in the background and the little book they're exchanging on the cover. Oh my God, it's just so cute. This one comes out February 28th and I definitely want to be reading this one when it comes out. And then this is one that I just heard about very recently. It's Business or Pleasure by Rachel Lynn Solomon. And this is one that I just immediately added to my TBR because Rachel Lynn Solomon wrote The X Talk, which is like one of my favorite romance books. This one comes out in June, June 20th. And this one says a ghost writer and a struggling actor help each other on the page and in the bedroom in this steamy romantic comedy. Oh my gosh, it just sounds like it's gonna be so fun. I love, you know, as mentioned, I love following writers. So the fact that it's a ghost writer is really interesting and then following a struggling actor, like I just can't wait. I think it's gonna be so cute. I don't know if I love this book cover. Like this book cover looks, I mean, it's fine. It's cute, I guess. It kind of matches the um, grainy like texture of the other ones though. So I guess that's cool. And then we have Happy Place by Emily Henry, which this is probably my most anticipated romance of next year because of how much I fucking loved book lovers. Um, but this one comes out in April. This cover is like super cute. It's super pink. Um, this one just says a couple who broke up months ago make a pact to pretend to still be together for their annual week long vacation with their best friends. So, I mean, of course, you know, anything that's like fake dating or you have to pretend to be together even though you aren't, that's one of my favorite things to read about. So I'm very much looking forward to this one. I've also got Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez on this list because of how much I loved Part of Your World when I read her book last year. This one comes out in April. This one just says a novel of terrible first impressions, hilarious second chances, and the joy of finding your perfect match. That was like super vague. So I don't really know what this one's gonna be about, but honestly, like I'll probably just check it out anyways because of how much I loved this author's last book. And then we have The Fiance Farce by Alexandria Bellafleur, which this is one of my favorite romance authors because she wrote all of the like written in the stars, uh, Count Your Lucky Stars, like those romance books, like that series that I'm obsessed with. This one is another um, LGBT lesbian romance. This one comes out April 18th. And it says, Alexandria Belfer returns with the steamy sapphic rom-com about a quiet bookseller and a romance novel cover model who agree to a modern day marriage of convenience. Like, oh my God, shut the fuck up. So we not only have, you know, the quiet bookseller, but then we have a romance novel cover model and they're gonna agree to a marriage of convenience. Oh my God, this is like right up my alley. This is everything that I love in romance. I can't wait to read it. I don't know if I love this cover though. Like that's the one thing that's like putting me off from this book is because the cover is just not my favorite. 
But otherwise, like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to read this. All right, and then we have The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. This one's coming out May 16th. And Christina Lauren has been an author that I have loved and then I have not loved some of their books. I'm feeling very lukewarm towards Christina Lauren these days, but I still... I'm curious about this one because the premise, it says sparks fly when a romance novelist and a documentary filmmaker join forces to craft the perfect Hollywood love story and take both of their careers to the next level. So yeah, you know, that's the thing for me is that, you know, I said going forward, I would only pick up Christina Lauren books if the premise of the book actually intrigued me because like the last, the premise of like their last two books or so was kind of like meh and then the books ended up being meh anyways. But this one, oh my gosh, this sounds right up my alley because once again, Again, we're following a romance novelist. I love following writers. And then a documentary filmmaker. Like, I love following people in the film industry. I don't think I've ever read a book that spe that's specifically about, like, a documentary filmmaker. So that's actually really fucking cool, and I'm really curious to check this one out. And then we have Just My Type by Fallon Ballard. Um, this one comes out February 7th. This is the same author as Lease on Love, which ended up being in my top 15 books of last year. So this is one that I'm very excited about. This cover is just so freaking cute. I love the purple and the cute little plants. And then it says, to win the job of her dreams, a relationship-prone journalist needs to learn how to stay single in this heartwarming and hilarious new romantic comedy. This just sounds like it's gonna be so cute. And once again, we're following a writer. I mean, I know she's a journalist, but still like a writer. That's amazing. Something that I am nervous about though with this premise is that it sounds like the love interest is her high school ex. Seth, who's now a journalist in his own right, he takes an assignment. A second chance romance, possibly, if she was with him before. So I don't know, like, I don't usually love second chance romances, but also the fact that he's also a journalist makes it exciting and interesting because then they're both writers and they're gonna be working in the same space. So we have a potential like office kind of romance situation happening. I don't know, I'm still excited for this. And then also X's and O's by Amy Lee. This one just sounds so cute. This one actually just came out January 10th. It's very, it's a very new one that just came out. I actually do have a copy of this ready to go. Um, but this one I'm so excited about because it says a romance novel obsessed social media influencer revisits her exes on her hunt for true love. And I have not read a book from this author yet. I just noticed it says this is technically, I guess, the secret sequel in some kind of romance series, but I'm very excited to read this because I love in romance books where we follow like a social media influencer because you know that's something I'm a little familiar with. So this one looks super fun. And then also this is another romance, Sorry Bro, that is coming out in January that I just got a copy of this book so I cannot wait to read it. But this one follows an Armenian American woman who rediscovers her roots and embraces who she really is in this vibrant and heartfelt queer rom-com. I just love the title, Sorry Bro, and the fact that it's like a female-female romance. Like, sign me the fuck up. This sounds so cute. And then we have Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. This one is one that I'm excited about because of how much I enjoyed The Bodyguard, which was Catherine Center's last romance book. This one comes out July 11th. I don't know, we shall see. After loving The Bodyguard as much as I did last year, I'm pretty excited to check out this one because I've also been hearing pretty good things about this one and I love this book cover. It's just so freaking cute and I love how she's wearing rollerblades. Like, why is she wearing rollerblades? I don't know, but I like it. All right, and then the last romance that I have on this list is one that I actually just found out about like yesterday because it's from Cold World with Love by Alicia Thompson. Um, and the reason why I'm excited for this one is because it's the same author as Love in the Time of Serial Killers, which is a book that I mostly loved last year. I had a really emotional roller coaster of a relationship with that book, but for the most part, I really enjoyed it. And this one comes out August 1st, but this one says she has a to-do list a mile long and falling for her coworker isn't on it, yet somehow he's become her top priority in this romantic comedy. So that's exciting because we have someone falling for their coworker. I'm intrigued. I'm invested. I do like this cover. I like that it matches, you know, this author's first book. So yeah, really looking forward to this one in August. All right, and then on to the mystery thrillers. This is where the bulk of the video is going to be because I have so many freaking books on this list. So the first one is going to be The Spare Room, which comes out on June 20th. This is from the author Andrea Bartz, and she was the author who came out with that book, We Were Never Here, which was a thriller that I thought was interesting. Uh, but this one looks really interesting. I really like this cover. This is one of my favorite thriller covers probably of this year. And it says, staying with a friend and her husband is more intimate and dangerous than anyone could have imagine. It sounds like it's going to involve some characters who are being like cut off from the outside world and staying with friends and I don't really know. It just sounds really cool. I don't want to read too much into it because 
I don't want to spoil myself. I feel like a lot of times uh, thriller premises, I've noticed they tend to be kind of like spoilery sometimes. So like, I just want to read the little blurb and like, that's about it. Like, that's all I want to know. And then we have a new Sherry Lupina coming out this year called Everyone Here is Lying. This one comes out July 20th. And again, you know, I added this to the TBR because Sherry Lupina, I'm pretty sure I've read every single thriller that Sherry Lupina has come out with at this point. And it says, you know, welcome to Stanhope, a safe neighborhood, a place for families. William is a family man on the surface, but he's been having an affair, an affair that ended horribly this afternoon at a motel. Um, hours later, Avery's family declares her missing. Suddenly Stanhope doesn't feel so safe. So it just sounds like it's about, you know, an affair, a woman goes missing. I don't know, but I will read it. All right, and then we have The Things We Do To Our Friends. This one comes out January 10th, and this one just sounds kind of interesting, and also this cover is so goddamn stunning. Do you not agree? Wow, like I love the flowers over her face. I just think that looks so beautiful. Um, it says she's an outsider desperate to belong, but the cost of entry might be her darkest secret in this intoxicating debut of literary suspense following a clique of dangerously ambitious students at the University of Edinburgh. So I think I did uh, add this book because it sounds like some fun, pretentious, dark academia type of bullshit that I love. It looks like it's not getting the best reviews so far, to be honest. Like a 3.55 out of 5 is not the best, but I am still very curious about this one. I think it looks really interesting. And then we have The Pledge, which this one is a young adult um, horror kind of book that just sounds so interesting. And I think I'm intrigued by this because the premise says Scream meets Clown in a Cornfield. Like what? And it features a masked killer who's targeting frat boys. So like, I don't know, I'm intrigued. I think this cover is actually so stunning. Like I love the pink and the freaking purple that's like shining through on this. And I think it looks creepy and really cool. So I'm curious about this one. It comes out February 14th. And then we have What Have We Done by Alex Finlay. This is one where it's more like, I have my eye on this book. I don't know if it's like something that I'm immediately gonna pick up because of my experience with this author's last two books. I think I actually DNF'd both of his last two books, but this one comes out March 7th. And this one, it just sounds like it could be interesting, you know, because we're talking about deadly secrets. There's a reality TV producer with a debt 25 years ago. They were the best of friends, a bond forged as residents of Savior House, an abusive home, an abusive group home for parentless teens. When the home was shut down after the disappearance of several kids, these three were split up. It's a reunion none of them asked for or wanted. You know, I do love the uh, trope or like whatever, the writing in thrillers where we get, you know, to see these people as children and they grew this close bond and then something happened and then they lost touch and then they're connecting again as adults. Like I do love that. So like, I don't know, we'll see how this goes. I feel like I'm gonna keep my eye on the ratings and if this book dips below like a 3.6 then I might not pick it up but for now I'm intrigued. And then we have For You and Only You by Caroline Kepnes. This is the fourth book in the You series, you know the Joe Goldberg series. This comes out April 4th. I am so looking forward to this because you know even though the last two books in the You series have just been okay for me, I'm just so fascinated by Joe Goldberg's character and like I have to know where the story is going next. I think uh the fourth series season of you is actually coming out in February. So it's interesting because now the TV shows are ahead of the books, I'm pretty sure. And so I'm curious to see how that's gonna go, you know, because I think the fourth season of You will be coming out in February, and then this book won't be coming out until April. So I'm curious to see if they're gonna follow the same story at all and how that's gonna work now that I think about it. But either way, I mean, this one, it sounds like it says it follows Joe Goldberg to the Harvard University where he earns a coveted place in a writing fellowship. So, I mean, that sounds incredible. Like, I wanna read that, you know, I wanna know. And then next on this list, we have Mr. Magic by Kirsten White. This one comes out August 1st and this one's a horror adult mystery. This one is one that I am nervous about because this author's last book, Hide, was a one-star book for me but again I thought the premise was so freaking cool so that's why I am kind of nervous about this one because even though the premise is intriguing you know um, who knows how the writing is actually going to be but this one says uh, who is Mr. Magic? Former child star reunite to uncover the tragedy that ended their show and discover the secret of its enigmatic host in this dark supernatural thriller. It just sounds like it's gonna be really cool because it involves some kind of production of like a children's TV show. And it just sounds like it's gonna be really unique and really different, so I'm intrigued. And then next up we have The Angel Maker by Alex North. This is another one that I am intrigued by, 
but I am also keeping my eye on this one because this is the same author as The Whisper Man, which I didn't love The Whisper Man, but then I really did enjoy his next book, The Shadows. Um, this one comes out February 28th. It says it's a dark, suspenseful new thriller about the mysteries of fate, the unbreakable bond of siblings, and a notorious serial killer who is said to know the future. Yeah, okay, see, that's where I'm intrigued because I'm like, wait, what? I think that sounds like it involves almost like a bit of a sci-fi aspect or something like I don't really know but it just sounds like it's gonna be interesting and then we have All Hollows by Christopher Golden and this one I literally only added this to the list because of this first line right there it says with the 80s nostalgia of stranger things this horror drama follows neighborhood families in a mysterious lurking evil on one Halloween day we're literally following Halloween night 1984 in Massachusetts two families are unraveling up and down the street horrifying secrets are being revealed all the while mixed in with the trick-or-treaters of all ages and the fact that this one comes out in January I'm like damn because I want to read this on Halloween you know like this sounds like the perfect Halloween read and I love the fact that this is horror even though that premise the beginning of it kind of sounds like a thriller but then I love how it says they seem to be terrified keep them safe from the cunning man there's a small clearing in the woods now that was never there before and a blackthorn tree that doesn't belong at all these odd children claim that the cunning man is coming for them and they want the local kids to protect them so like what the fuck is that about I'm just so excited for this. I think it sounds so fun, so unique. And then we have The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. This one actually just came out on January 3rd. It is already out in the world, but this is one that I'm excited about because it's the same author as The Wife Upstairs and Reckless Girls, which honestly, this author's thrillers are just so, like, they're not the best quality you know like they're not like my favorite thrillers of all time but they're just so much fun to read and so this is one that i'm really intrigued by um this one it deals with like an italian villa vacation that has a dark history with like friends i don't really know what this one's about to be honest i'm reading it very soon all right and then next up we have the whispers by ashley audrain which this one is set to be coming out june 20th and this one is literally one of my most anticipated books of the year because this is the same author as the push which you know the push is one of my favorite books of all time and this one just says a propulsive page turner about four families whose lives are changed when the unthinkable happens and what is lost when we give it into our own worst impulses like i don't even need to know more than that because i will read it i feel like this author is really great at writing stories that are just really moving and you know her thrillers aren't always necessarily the most like thrilling things that you'll ever read a lot of times they're just like really good character studies that feel very real and that's what makes them very scary and thrilling and so i'm so excited for this i cannot wait all right and the next i have you shouldn't have come here by geneva rose this is one that i am nervous about because of how much i thought the last author's book was just meh but also this premise and this cover is so stunning like i love Love this cover I think it's so beautiful and this one says Grace Evans an overworked New Yorker looking for a total escape from her busy life books an Airbnb on a ranch in the middle of Wyoming but then there are things quickly that she's not too happy about like a lack of cell phone service a missing woman and a feeling that something just isn't right in this town I love okay like I'm obsessed with this uh, trend that I'm seeing in like horror and thriller lately where people are booking like an Airbnb and then things go south because I just think that that's so fascinating and it's so like relevant to our times you know to like be reading books about Airbnbs so like I'm just really looking forward to this it sounds like it could be almost like barbarian vibes but like obviously not as horror or more on the thriller side maybe I don't know I'm excited for this and then we have the last word by Taylor Adams oh my gosh this one comes out April 25th and this one sounds fucking crazy okay the premise of this is like what because this is the same author as No Exit and Hairpin Bridge, so that's a main reason why I'm excited for it, because I loved No Exit. But this one says, after posting a negative book review, a woman living in a remote location begins to wonder if the author is a little touchy or even very dangerous. So like, what the fuck? This is a fucking book about how this girl writes a negative review for a book, and then the author, like literally, I don't know, starts stalking her, like hunts her down and kills her? I don't know. It also takes place in Washington, which I also think is really cool and really interesting. Um, I'm just so curious about this one. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so tempted to like have this as a book troop option this year because I'm freaking excited. I have high hopes. And then we have The Drift by CJ Tudor. This one is a thriller horror book that actually comes out in January. Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize it comes out this soon. 
Um, but this one, you know, CJ Tudor. I'm adding this one to my list because I love CJ Tudor. This is the author of The Chalk Man and The Other People and just like a number of books that I've really enjoyed. So this one sounds like it's going to be really interesting. It sounds like it's about a bunch of people who are evacuated from a secluded boarding school during a snowstorm and then things turn deadly because outside the storm rages, inside each group a killer lurks. But who? I don't know, it sounds like it's gonna be really unique, really fun. And then I have a twisted love story by Samantha Downing. Oh my gosh, Samantha Downing is the author of, you know, My Lovely Wife and For Your Own Good. I feel like her thrillers are just so chaotic and so fun and so different. Um, this one's coming out July 18th and this one says, it comes a reckless, delicious thriller about a young couple that gives a whole new meaning to the dangers of modern dating. Um, also, the characters' names are Wes and Ivy. Like, oh my god, I'm obsessed with both of those names. I say this all the time, but Wes is one of my favorite names for a guy. Like, I just love the name Wes. And then Ivy? Are you kidding me? We're getting Evermore vibes? So yeah, I don't even need to know what this one's about. Like, I will be reading it because I'm so excited. And then we have The Handyman Method, and this is by Nick Cutter and Andrew F. Sullivan. Nick Cutter is, you know, the author of The Troop, which is one of my favorite books of all time. This one isn't coming out until August 8th. Oh my gosh, it's so far away. But look at this cover. Oh my gosh, is this not the coolest thing? It's like this house is like sinking and there's like red fucking glow around it. I don't even know, but this looks so fucking cool. And this one is a horror novel. It just says a chilling domestic story of terror for fans of Black Mirror and the Amityville horror. Are you fucking serious? It says when a young family moves into an unfinished development community, cracks begin to emerge in both their new residence and their lives as a mysterious online DIY instructor delivers dark subliminal suggestions about how to handle any problem around the house. The trials of home improvement, destructive insecurities, and haunted house horror all collide in this thrilling story. Perfect for fans of The Troop and The Deep, which is fucking incredible. Oh my god, I cannot wait. This sounds like it's just gonna be so unique, so interesting. Also, I don't know who Andrew F. Sullivan is. Like, who is this co-writer? Yeah, I haven't read anything by this co-writer, but I am very intrigued. All right, and then we have The Kind Worth Saving by Peter Swanson. This one's actually the sequel to The Kind Worth Killing. So I'm going into this one very nervous because The Kind Worth Killing is my favorite Peter Swanson book. But now I don't know if I can trust Peter Swanson because of his last couple of books. And now I'm nervous that this is going to suck. Um, but it's coming out March 2nd. I don't know. It's a sequel to The Kind Worth Killing. So I don't really want to read too much of this premise here because I don't want it to spoil anything from The Kind Worth Killing, but um, I'm really curious, you know, I feel like I might need to reread The Kind Worth Killing before I read this one because it's been so many years and I don't remember everything that happened in that book and I don't know if this book would even like necessarily need a sequel, so I'm really curious to see what he does with this book. And then of course we have Finlay Donovan Jumps the Gun. This is the third book in the Finlay Donovan universe. Um, this one actually comes out January 31st. Holy shit, I did not realize it was coming out so soon. Um, but again, I don't want to be reading the premise for this one because it's the third book in a series, so I don't know if it'll spoil anything, but Finlay Donovan is just like one of my favorite, you know, thriller book series ever. Um, it's just like the cutest, it's like the most fun um, time, so I can't wait to read this one. And then we have <laughs> This Delicious Death. This one's a young adult horror novel that just sounds so interesting, I just had to add it. Um, it's coming out in April, and it just says, four best friends, one music festival, and a cooler filled with human organs. This summer is about to get gory. And then it says, Jennifer's body fans will clamor for this new sapphic horror standalone. I don't know, it just sounds like it could be really interesting. I'm like, is this like cannibalism? Like what is going on? And then we have How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. This one's going on sale very soon in the month of January. And this one's also going to be a book troop pick for the month of March. So I'm very excited about this one. Um, Grady Hendrix is an author that I've mostly enjoyed a lot of his stuff. I actually really did not like the Final Girl Support Group, which was his most recent book, but everything else I've really enjoyed from him. So I'm really excited to read this one. And then we have episode 13. And this one's coming out January 24th. I have just, I just heard of this one very recently and I was like, what the heck? I've never read anything by this author, but the fucking premise says a ghost hunting reality TV crew gain unprecedented access to an abandoned and supposedly haunted mansion, which promises a groundbreaking 13th episode. But as they uncover the secret history of the house, they learn that reality TV might be all too real. So like, what the heck? That just sounds so fascinating and like something I would love to read, like a ghost hunting reality TV crew. 
I don't know, it just sounds like it's gonna be so interesting, so fun. This is definitely one that I have my eye on. And then we have Looking Glass Sound by Katrina Ward. This one is the same author as The Last House on Needless Street and a few others that I just really enjoy this author's writing style. I think her writing style is really unique and really different. This one doesn't come out until August 22nd, uh, but this one just says, it comes another mind-bending and cleverly crafted tale about a group of friends struggling to come to terms with the horrors of their past. It's interesting too because it says, uh, it's a book about the stories that shape us and how easily they can escape us in the vein of Stephen King's stand by me. So I don't know, I'm really intrigued by this one. I love this cover. I think this cover is like one of my favorite book covers of next year. Like I just love the way that that makes a little skeleton face or something. Oh my god, it's stunning. And then we have All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby. This is one of my, you know, favorite authors after Razorblade Tears. I'm obsessed. Um, and this one sounds like it's going to be really interesting. It's coming out June 6th. Um, I really love this cover, by the way. Oh my gosh, the way that this blue is going around the moon like that and the freaking orange and the red of the- Oh my god, everything about this cover just really works for me. But yeah, this one just sounds like it's going to be really interesting because we're following this protagonist who's a black sheriff in the history of Sharon County. It says he ran for sheriff to make a difference, especially in the black community, which has so often been treated unfairly by the police. But a year to the day after his election, a, sh a school shooting rocks the town. A beloved teacher is killed by a former student and as he attempts to de-escalate and get the boy to surrender his deputies fire a fatal shot in the investigation it becomes clear that the student they had shot had been abused by the dead teacher as well as unidentified perpetrators this sounds so fucking intense and i feel like sa cosby is so good at having so much relevant commentary on different things in our society so i'm so excited to read this one and then i have in nightfall by susan young this one's a young adult uh you know, fantasy horror vampires type of book, which is not my typical read, but I have read uh, Susan Young before. She's actually a young adult author that I used to be really into like back in the day. And so this one comes out March 28th. I'm just really curious about this one because it says in the quaint town of Nightfall, Oregon, it isn't the dark you should be afraid of, it's the girls. And then it says it's the Lost Boys meets Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Like, I don't really know, but it just sounds like it could be really cute and really interesting. And if you are wondering, Susan Young is the author of The Program, which was one of my favorite young adult books that I read when I was first getting into reading in like 2014. Um, so I'm just really curious kind of to see what she's doing next. You know, like I'm curious to see more of like a horror kind of vampire situation from her. I don't know, I'm intrigued. And then we have The Drowning Woman by Robin Harding. This one comes out June 13th. And this one, you know, once again, it's Robin Harding. Um, she's an author that I've never like loved any of her books but again her thrillers they're very much like rachel hawkins where they're just like really fucking fun like they're just so much fun to read and this one just says robin harding returns with a deliciously twisted story of friendship retribution and betrayal about a homeless woman fleeing a dangerous past and the wealthy society wife she saves from drowning who pulls her into a dark web of secrets and lies it sounds like it's gonna be super fun just like a lot of her previous books like i don't know she's just so good at writing like drama that's just so fun to read about. And then of course we have The Only One Left by Riley Sager. Did you think I was going to leave this off this list? Absolutely not. This one comes out June 20th and honestly this one might be like one of my top most anticipated on this whole list because you know Riley Sager and this one you know it might be my most anticipated on this whole list because even it's Riley Sager you know like, even though I haven't loved his last two releases he's still like one of my favorite thriller authors. He's still someone that I have my eye on always and this one sounds like it's going to be absolutely fucking incredible and this one just sounds like it's gonna be everything because it says the hope family murders shocked the main coast one bloody night in 1929 while most people assume 17 year old lenora was responsible the police were never able to prove it we're following this woman named Kit who arrives at the decaying Hope's End to care for Lenora after her previous nurse fled in the middle of the night. In her 70s and confined to a wheelchair, Lenora was rendered mute by a series of strokes and can only communicate with Kit by tapping out sentences on an old typewriter. Honestly, kind of creepy. And then it says, as Kit helps Lenora write about the events leading to the Hope family massacre, it becomes clear there's more to the tale than people know. Oh my gosh, it just sounds like it's gonna be so fun. 
And then we have this one called Burlington by Heather Dixon. This is one that's coming out August 22nd. And this one I just added because I thought it looked interesting. It says, May Roberts is certain her new life in the suburbs with her family will be everything she's always wanted. That is until one of the mothers from her daughter's school goes missing. This one just sounds like it's like the typical thing that I love to read in thrillers where it's like small town suburban moms and then something happens and it kind of turns into more of a thriller. I don't know if this is going to be my thing or not, but it just sounds like it could be really interesting and very like Big Little Lies energy. I don't know. I think that's why I added it. I also do like this cover. I think it looks really like creepy in a way. It's giving like don't worry darling energy with this cover. I don't know. And then the last book that I have on this list is Silver Nitrate by Silvia Morena Garcia. This is one that I'm so curious about. It comes out July 18th. And this is the same author as Mexican Gothic. You know, you might be familiar. And this one I'm so excited because, okay, this cover is like really cool. I love the bold red with like this silver and her face on it. I just think it looks really cool. And this premise just says that it's a dark thriller about the curse that haunts a legendary lost film and awakens one woman's hidden powers. Like, what? I'm so excited for this because I love, like, lately I've discovered that I love horror books that involve, like, films in any way. Like, whether they take place on a film set or they involve, like, yeah, like a lost film. It just sounds so intriguing. Um, I saw that it also takes place, it says she left out of the boys club running the film industry in 90s Mexico City. So if some of this does take place in the 90s, possibly, like, I think that would also be really cool. All right, so those are all of the books that I have on my list of my most anticipated books of 2023. You know, as I just said, it's quite a lot. I know that was like over 50 books, but I feel like this year there are just so many things coming out. There are a few of my favorite authors that are coming out with new books this year, so I'm just very much looking forward to it. You'll have to let me know if you're also excited about any of these books that are coming out next year, or, you know, what are some of your most anticipated books coming out in 2023 that I didn't mention? If there are any other new releases that you think that I should have my eye on, I would love to know, so let me know in the comments below. And yeah, thank you so much for watching as always, and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.